Z. This meeting is being recorded by the host or a participant. That was me, I think. Speech on demand. Yes, that was me. I just turned my jaws off. Oh, that's right. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Abba Cafe. This is episode number 88. It is August 14th, 2022. I'm your host, Sri Roy, and I'm really excited uh, that we had a guest presenter from the from our vendor, or I should say from Envision, Bob Rain. And today's topic is going to be a deep dive looking, the, I'm sorry, a deep dive look into the Envision app as well as the Envision glasses. So with that said, Sandhya, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, ask what is going on at iBug today, if you can let us know. All right, thank you, Shri. Yes, we have a busy week. This is just what's happening this week. Okay, so what's happening? Uh, today, right now, we're at the iBug Cafe. Tomorrow will be iBug Buzz from 7 to 9. All times that I mention are central time and everything happens on this same Zoom conference live unless I specify otherwise. That one on Monday night will be all questions about the iPhone and related peripherals and various applications. So come and ask your question. We would love to have you. Then on Tuesday from 5 to 6 on Clubhouse, we will have the Mac Buzz. Any questions related to the Mac, we will entertain those and help you with those. So please come to the Clubhouse on that time. Then on Wednesday is Android Insight, and that is from 7 to 8.30. All things related to the Android platform, Google, the A-Lady, all those things that we can't talk about in other calls, we're going to talk about them there. So please come for that. And then Thursday is is I have a Trekkie talk from 8 to 9.30, so we are starting the new season five. We're going to be watching episodes two and three. Watch them ahead of time, and then come join your fellow Trekkies for a discussion. And then, and trivia, of course. Friday is iBug Night at the Virtual Movies. We don't know what the movie will be, but it'll be an audio described movie. If you want to find out what it is, come for those. Uh, the big reveal will be during our iBug Buzz call at the midpoint. And let's see, we have a social hour, well, social half hour, I guess, whatever you want to call it, right before the movie and have a little fun with movies and stuff like that. And then afterwards, we have discussion and trivia. Saturday is iBug Apple Workshop. Yes, you might be thinking, what? It's I thought it's on the fourth Saturday. Well, it's not due to a scheduling issue. We are having it on the third Saturday. So it's a busy week. That is from two to four. Again, on Zoom, we talk about the latest Apple news and various applications and third party demos. So come for that on Saturday. Social media. We have a website, ibugtoday.org, I B U G T O Y. <laughs> ibugtoday.org. That is the best place to get all your information about all of our events. Definitely please register, fill out your email and your name and so forth, and then you'll get notifications of all our upcoming events. It is free, as are all of our services. We have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash group slash iBug today. Same, you can there post questions and help others with their questions. Follow us also on Twitter is at iBug today. And then we have a Gmail address, iBug today at Gmail address. If you have some residual questions and you can send them there. Uh, let's see, those are the upcoming events. We uh, will hope that we, can meet you and hope that you all come to some or any of all these events and we will uh, get started with the program. Handing it back to you, Shri. All right, Sonia, thank you. Definitely check out our website. So we're gonna start off with our icebreaker question. Uh, this is probably the easiest question that I'm gonna ask our audience today. Uh, the icebreaker question is basically a, a yes or no answer, very simple. The question is, have you used the Envision app or the Envision glasses. And all you need to do is say yes or no to the question. And so we'll go around and let everyone introduce yourself. Just tell us uh, your name, where you're calling from, and if you've used the Envision app or the glasses by simply just saying yes or no. So Sandy, go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and unmute and we'll get started. Yep. All set. This is Herbie in Houston. And oh, no, yes. no, 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 no. Welcome, Chanel in Houston, yes. Marie in Reno, yes. Oh, welcome, Marie. Terry in Arlington Heights, yes. Welcome, Terry. Gail in Houston, yes. 
Welcome, Dan. Dan, Southern California, yes. Welcome. Bridget Dozier, Atlanta, no. Okay, welcome, Bridget. This is Dee from Southern Illinois, no. Welcome, Dee. Fred Quick Vincent from New, New York. York. No. Uh, welcome, Fred. And I'm sorry, who's the next one? Oh, Fred. Fred. Uh, Vincent, New Jersey, no. Uh, welcome, Vincent. Ted you heard in Austin? In Houston, no. Okay, I heard Ted. Uh, I who's the next one? Uh, this is Scott from Arlington, Virginia, and I've used only the app. All right, welcome, Scott. Thank you. Hi, sorry. It's Nancy. Kathy from Tulsa, and I did not use it. All right, welcome. Tara Peggy. from Fairfax, no. <laughs> Peggy Welcome, from Tara. Florida, no. Arianna Austin, Davida from no. Reston, no. Okay, Davida, and I'm sorry, I didn't get the next uh, name. Uh, Gary. Gary. No. Okay. okay. Welcome. Richard from Houston. Eleanor no. from El Paso. Okay. Richard and Eleanor. Okay, Eleanor welcome. from El Paso, no. Welcome. <laughs> Rex, uh, we'll welcome Rex, the dog Sam too. Sam at Arlington Heights. I've I've only downloaded the app. I've not used the glasses. Okay. Well, welcome. Thank you. Dana in Cincinnati. No. Welcome, Dana. Girl in Toronto. Yes. All right, girl. Welcome. Denise, Columbus, Ohio. No. All right. Welcome. Nancy and Austin. No. All right. Welcome, Nancy. Right, who's the next one? Vicky in North Carolina. I've used both. Okay. Welcome, Vicky. Pam in Chicago. No. All right. Welcome. Thank you. Jody in New Hampshire. No. All right. Welcome, Jody. Hi, Shri. Bob from Indiana. No. All right. Welcome, Bob. Suva from Houston. Yes. All right. Welcome, Suva. Sharon from New York, no. Hi, welcome, Sharon. Hi, Suva. Mary Alice from San Antonio, no. All right, welcome. Anyone else? Sunday from Houston, yes. All right, Sunday, welcome. And if anyone here is a first time caller, can you just announce your name? I apologize, I forgot to announce it earlier. If you're new to this cafe, I would love to know, um, how did you hear about us? Paul Walker, Columbus, Ohio. Hey, Paul, welcome. How did you hear about us? We had uh, Mike as a guest on the uh, Guide Dogs of the Blind Tech Dogs uh, call last month or so. And uh, uh, Terry Sauerman uh, has been enthusiastic about the group for quite a while. And so we decided to check it out. I and I did not get in on that the vote. I have used the app only so far. Okay, well, welcome, Paul. Uh, anyone else? This is Roxanne Calabro in Arlington Heights, Illinois. And I was also recommended by Terry and I'm also a member of the Tech Dogs list and I know Paul as well. So we're all okay. together. All right, well, welcome. I'm Vicky, and I heard about it from uh, David Goldfield's Tech okay. VI list. All right. Well, welcome. Uh, yeah, Denise, anyone else? Co Denise yeah, Columbus, Ohio, and um, David Goldfield's list as well. Okay. Great. Great. Uh, who's and next? I'm Fred Quick from New York. Same thing, David Goldfield's list. That's how I heard about it. Oh, great. Great. <clears throat> welcome. Uh, anyone else? Three, I Scott here, and I heard about it from you. Hi, right, welcome, Scott. Yeah, Gary and Austin. Uh, this is my first iPhone unplug or iBug unplugged event, but I've been to a few other ones, and I heard about it on the uh, from the uh, email list. All right, well, welcome. All right, anyone else? If not, Elizabeth uh, from Newfoundland, yeah. Canada. Welcome, Elizabeth. And how did you hear about us? Uh, Phil Coulter, Coulter from uh, Canadian Council of the Blind in, um, this is in Ontario, Mississauga. Okay, great. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, the answer was no, I haven't used either. All right. Okay, great. All right. If not, I'm going to, uh, this is uh, Shri Roy. I'm from uh, Springfield, Virginia. And 
I have used the app, but not the glasses. All right, so today I'm really excited uh, at the cafe. We have a representative from Envision, uh, Bob Rain. Uh, he has been part of the, the Texas Workforce Committee, better known, I guess, as TWC, since 2012. Uh, prior to coming to Envision, Bob worked at ORCAM for over eight years, and now he's currently employed at Envision. And Bob, I'm just excited you're here, and I'd love to hear about these two products. So I'm going to give the mic back to you. Fantastic. Well, this is great that uh, you're giving me this opportunity to meet with you, uh, taking time out of your Sunday to um, become more and more aware of uh, the apps that are out there to basically bridge the gap between those with visually uh, challenged lives and those with none. Um, again, my name is Bob Rame. Uh, I, I, I'm a consultant for Envision and I am in Houston, Texas. So uh, for those who are from Houston at the iBug uh, group, uh, we probably have met at, uh, or we've at least walked by in the hallways uh, in the past. Um, and that has been at least before COVID, before, uh, since the last time I was at an iBug uh, group meeting. So with that much said, um, uh, Envision, uh, it is an application and it's a system. Uh, it is a free app that you can go to the uh, app store and download. Um, it was uh, at one point a subscription service, but now they have released it for free. So uh, for those who have not used the app, go ahead and download that. Obviously, if you're on your phone, you want to wait till we're over with the call. Be aware it's called Envision AI. Okay, no space between Envision and an AI. And that's spelled with an E, E-N-V-I-S-I-O-N-A-I. -I okay. Uh, and also when you do register it, I highly recommend you use your email address that's installed on the phone. Just in case any verification codes come in in the future, uh, it would come into the phone um, email application and make it very easy for you to uh, get that verification code into the app if, if necessary. Okay, so um, the Envision AI uh, app basically tries to uh, provide three, four basic features for those with visual impairment. Uh, it does come with a built-in magnifier, uh, utilizes the um, system that's in the, in the uh, cell phone itself. Uh, it also, in three basic categories, it will allow you to read text almost anywhere. And there's three different modes, and we'll talk about that. There's also identification, which allows you to identify items uh, and objects around you. And then you can find things around you. Okay. Um, also, the app also has a dashboard or control panel for the glasses. And we'll talk about that um, after the break. Um, and then of course you do have the um, account settings which allow you to um, uh, you know, give feedback to Envision um, on product suggestions, uh, any bugs that you may find uh, as well as um, um, uh, get to the tutorials to how to use the Envision app. But uh, the Envision app, it's, uh, again, it, um, the, 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 the real heart of the system uh, in bringing accessibility is the reading features. And um, there are three basic styles of reading. There is instant text, there is scan text, and then there is batch scanning. So, to start off with instant text, and this is usually um, a very difficult concept to talk about because the feature is so revolutionary that is, it is the closest uh, way to provide uh, um, imitation vision to someone who is visually impaired. And what it does is it basically provides video, and that's live video, 
stream to text. So a uh, good way to explain how that works. If you were walking down a street and you had instant text turned on on your phone, um, any text that the camera sees on the phone, it's going to instantly read. So say you have um, one of the pocket vests you can put your phone in and you're walking down the street. Anytime it would see a street sign, a billboard, you would turn and face the camera toward a house. It would instantly read the numbers on the house. Um, if you're walking in a mall, it'll instantly read all of the store signs, all of the door um, descriptions. Uh, it would uh, instantly read, say, if you were in a conference center, um, all of the vendor booth uh, titles, all of the posters behind it, uh, any signs that it sees, it instantly reads it to you. And it's constantly um, uh, videoing and constantly converting any text it sees into speech. Now, uh, again, it's, it's supposed to be like a person with normal vision uh, as they're walking down or walking through an area. Anytime their eyes see text, it converts a signal to their brain and their brain can then read that text. And that's what they tried to do is provide that uh, uh, visual imitation. Um, and, and again, once a person knows how to use instant text, they realize that uh, it will read uh, product packaging very well. It will read screens on your computer very well. It'll read control panels on appliances very well. Um, and since it's a uh, live streaming video to speech, it will read pixelated text as well. So if you go, if you have an LCD thermostat in your house, you can use instant text to instantly read that. Um, uh, also LEDs on say appliances, it will read the contents of that LED as well as any controls on that panel. So um, it's constantly reading, converting the text that the video sees to speech and you can turn it on and turn it off just by tapping on the screen of your cell phone. So if it becomes overwhelming, say you come across an area where there's a lot of, a lot of text, you can instantly turn that conversion to speech off. And if need be, reposition the phone and turn that OCR back on. So it starts reading that text again. And again, it's really, it's very hard to explain uh, verbally. And my recommendation is that you download the app for those who haven't, or for those that have, uh, experiment by uh, presenting the phone to different items uh, and, and seeing how it does read. Now, the moving on to, and by the way, um, instant text will work even if you do not have any internet signal or any cell signal. So if you're in a dead zone, you can still use instant text to read. Okay, whereas a lot of the other apps, you always have to have um, a constant connection to the internet. Instant text um, actually works very well when you're offline, okay? Now, um, all the reading apps in the Envision AI app uh, will read up to 60 languages, okay? Now you can select it, a specific language to keep it there. However, if you are traveling, it will read those uh, uh, text in their native language. Now, uh, to translate that text, you would need to use scan text. Um, you need to then uh, in the app, go to translate, and then allows you to translate that picture of the text that you've taken, uh, that you've used scan text with. So just be aware that the device does a translation, but you have to use scan text. Now, scan text is a little different than instant text because it does take a picture. However, the, pic, the text can be upside down or sideways. And as I said, it can be multiple languages um, and it will even read cursive very well. It has uh, good accuracy. 
And again, I um, suggest you uh, test the cursive capability out with someone who can uh, write cursive. Uh, do not use lined um, paper. It's best to use blank paper. Again, um, it will read, if someone re say read, uh, uh, writes something down in one of the 16 languages, it will read that cursive text in that uh, language as well, okay? Now, uh, once you're in using scan, te scan text, you can rewind and fast forward as well as pause the playback. Now, if you want to save that scan document, you can then go ahead and export it to the library. And then once it's in the library, you can then change the name uh, to a usable um, uh, title because it will export it to using a uh, alphanumeric code uh, from the Envision servers. And then um, at that point you can translate it, but you can also share that text with other people. So you can then go ahead and text someone that document or you can send it to someone's email and that's how you allows you to take text uh, that you see around you capture it and then get it into your other devices so then at that point you can edit it um, and then um, uh, use that text in any way that you want okay so again scan text allows you to capture text it can be upside down, it can be sideways. Um, it will read up to 60 languages. Um, you can then import it into your library, then translate it or allow you to share it via text or via email, okay? The third reading capabilities in the app is the batch scan. That allows you to go ahead and take pictures of page after page after page. Say you have a book that isn't available in a digital form. You can actually take pictures of every, all the pages in that book um, and then start reading it from the app or you could then export it to your library and then share it uh, by sending it to your PC, your Mac uh, or to another device or to another person, okay? So to review, under reading, uh, you have the instant text, which is live video stream to text, which is a very, very different application. And if anyone has used it, um, I'd like to get your feedback from it. Um, then you have scan text, which takes a picture, uh, then converts it um, to speech, and it will allow you to um, read up to 60 languages. Um, you can then uh, save it, translate it and then uh, share it with other people. And then you have the batch scanning, which allows you to do all the scanning at one time uh, and uh, then go back and read it. There is no limit to batch scanning. Uh, I've had uh, end users uh, state that they've scanned up to 1000 pages of a book that wasn't available in a digital form. So um, if anyone ever finds a point where uh, they've reached the limit, please provide us feedback uh, of that particular situation uh, on the um, uh, settings tab of the, um, uh, the AI app on your phone. Um, okay, so uh, moving on from reading, then you come to the identification tab on the uh, Envision AI app. Now, uh, identification allows you to describe a scene. Um, and again, that you do need to have um, some kind of cell connection, uh, either through your cellular data or through an internet connection through Wi-Fi for that particular feature to work. And what it does is it takes a picture of your surroundings and it will then compare it to the database in the cloud and provide you its best description to you of the environment that you're in. Um, it is quite an interesting uh, um, app because uh, to give you an idea, when I've used it, uh, I've gone around my house to test it out. And when I've gotten to my, um, to a bedroom, it'll say that it's a bedroom, but if there's a person on the bed, it'll tell you there's a person on the bed. And then it added uh, an explanation that 
uh, it said there was a person on the bed in a messy room. And that was one of my children's room. And I was able to tell them at that point to clean their room up uh, after using the describe uh, scene. So it will um, provide you additional hints of the environment that you're around that other apps may not. Um, also uh, on the app, it will detect light. Um, uh, it'll tell you if you're in a low light situation um, or a, a significant uh, lit situation. Um, that's really good to find out if your lights are on and off in your apartment or your house. Um, and oh, by the way, uh, when you are using the features, the feedback you will get, it will tell you that if you're in a low light situation, um, it, it'll, the app will tell you it will work better in an um, area of better lighting. Um, but however, it will still try to attempt to provide you feedback. But again, it will give you uh, additional feedback that um, a, a more well-lit situation will work better for the uh, application. Um, you can also identify colors, and there's two modes on the app. You have the basic 30 or 256 color app. Now, when you start getting into the 256 color, it may give you a description of two different colors. Um, and again, the better the lighting environment, the better the results you'll get with your color identification. And what I've discovered is um, if you have um, uh, a LED desk lamp and you're trying to identify colors of clothing or something uh, that, uh, that you wanna know what the color is other than co uh, color of a fabric, um, you wanna put it underneath that LED desk lamp and that gives you really, really good results um, of what uh, of the accuracy of that color. Um, and lastly, on the phone uh, app, you can uh, read barcodes. And again, that does require an internet connection, uh, but um, it does have a good um, library uh, of millions and billions of uh, PCU um, uh, barcodes on that. And that's strictly for identification at this point in time, okay? Now that's all underneath the identification tab. Now under the find tab, um, there are three capabilities. There's find people. Um, there's also um, finding objects. And then there is also teaching the Envision app faces. So you are unlimited as far as the number of faces that you can record into the app for later recall. Um, under finding people, um, if there's a person in front of you that is not recorded, it'll just say there is a person in front of you. Um, just as an FYI, the engineers decided to take out the gender detection and age detection. Um, since a lot of apps uh, will try to give you the, uh, a, the gender and age. And a lot of times, if it is incorrect, uh, it does upset people. So they decided to take that capability out of finding people. Um, and uh, when you go to ahead and teach a face, uh, you, uh, we recommend that you take at least five pictures. Um, and usually that's a picture of a person looking up, looking down, looking left, looking right, and then looking straight at the camera. And then you go ahead and you type their name in. Um, I recommend you take another five pictures of an individual um, with the app, and then you give them, you type in a slightly different name. So one name may be their formal name, uh, and the second name for the second five set of pictures would be their nickname, or possibly um, uh, my sister or whatever else you may want to call that. Having extra pictures in the phone will give you um, uh, better um, uh, functionality when you're trying to find people. Um, now in finding an object, currently we can recognize uh, 17 objects and it does a very, very good job, uh, works very fast. Um, however, when you go and you use the um, slider to choose an object, when it sees that object, when you present it, in front of the camera, it dings. It goes ding, 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 ding. It doesn't announce the name of the object because uh, you select the object first from the list before you try to find it. 
Okay. Now, one of the nice things that are in the find uh, objects is dog, cat, as well as tables and chairs. And also it will find toilets. Okay. Um, other things that they are will be adding to the finding object will be sinks, uh, urinals, as well as uh, paper towel dispensers, um, garbage cans, and uh, hand dispensers. That's one thing that uh, everyone asks for, and they will eventually update it. Now, it's a nice thing about the uh, Envision app that you've probably noticed, and that is there's a lot of updates. Um, since I've been using my Envision system uh, this year, I've gotten about six updates uh, available on the app. And those, and the, when you go and turn the app on, it'll tell you that the app is, the update is available. And then um, it asks you to update it immediately. And again, that's either adding functionality to um, an existing feature or it will add functionality um, uh, and add a capability. So that would be such as possibly adding a, lang adding a language or uh, going into objects, it will help you um, find new objects that weren't in the existing list, okay? Um, those are the three broad or four categories, the magnification, the reading of text, the identifying, and the um, um, finding capabilities. Obviously, uh, what everybody's seen on the glasses tab in the app that it does ask you to, uh, you can tap on that and ask for a demonstration. And right now, if some of you want a more specific demonstration of the, of the glasses, uh, you can go into the website and we can provide you a one-on-one -on -one demonstration capability um, to show you how the glasses work, okay? Okay, so that's um, basically try to give you a step-by-step um, button by button capability of the Envision app. And so Shri, at this point, do you wanna take a break or do you wanna have Q and A? Um, why don't we go ahead and open it up for questions, Sandhya? Um, let's go ahead and unmute. And before, uh, before we unmute, just remember, if you have a question, you're gonna state your name, uh, then I'm gonna call upon you and then you can ask your question to Bob. And just keep your questions uh, geared towards the things that he's covered so far. This is Dan. Uh, go ahead, Dan. Okay. Um, I have the Envision app, and this morning I was trying to to get into the tutorials for reading, and it asked me to put in a special access password. My question is, how do I get a special access password, and why do I need one? Okay. So when did you load that? Uh, you didn't. You loaded it this morning. Yes. And when you go to register it, did it? Add, did you put in your email? I didn't. I didn't try to register it. I mean, I didn't have to. Well, well, yeah, you do need to register. The reason being is that it is private information, and by going to place register using your email as your account name, and then you enter in a password, because uh, the people and your documents. Are, uh, are basically a protected part of the app. Okay. Okay, so, okay. so those, how, how do uh, I those, register? Um, documents could be of a sensitive nature and or the people that you take a picture of are your people, okay? So you need to go under settings um, and then go ahead and uh, it should have, it should go in there and ask you for your, uh, enter your name and now would use your email address and then enter a password. So that may be what it's asking for. Okay. And then my other question is, uh, what about the lighting? I didn't notice any lighting uh, 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 setting. Where, where do we find the lighting setting? It should be under... Oh, Envision. Double tap to a dot. Safari. Weather. Double tap to Envision. It should Envision. be under Envision glasses. Tab bar. Identify. Tab. Two of five. Under identify. Selected. Find. Tab. Glasses. Settings. Glasses. Find. Tab. Three of five. Selected. 
Identify. Tab. Two of five. Detect colors. Button. Describe scene. Button. Detect color. Scan barcode. Button. Tab bar. Read. Well, I, I take I take that back. Um, I basically that's an added feature on the glasses. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that you. is not available on the app. All right, great, thanks. Uh, anyone else? Uh, yeah, Dana. Dana. Okay, Dana. Yeah. Um. Hi. Uh. When you were describing like colors, um, like clothing, uh, will it describe graphics? Like if a shirt has a graphic on it. At this point, if it's a uh, if you use, if it's a describe a scene um, and it's a well-known international graphic, describe a scene may say it, what it is. Okay. Okay, but in colors, it's strictly colors. No checkered, no polka dot, right. no stripes. Okay. Um, yeah. However, um, I would encourage everyone please go to the feedback section and ask for described clothes. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, thanks, Dana. Uh, was that Paul, did I hear? Yes, yes. Thank go ahead, Paul. Um, okay, in some instances with the glasses, we're talking about uh, having to be connected in, to the internet. Um, if with the glasses and a regular hey, hey Paul, yeah. sorry, Paul, are you gonna, if it's the glasses, let's wait till he's done the presentation about the glasses. Do you have something with the app right now? Okay, I'm sorry. Well, no, that's okay. I, think, I think with the app, that's not an issue because I'm connected, but it's, you know, interested in about the connecting with the glass once you the glasses, so. Okay. Yeah, so let's bring that, let's bring that question up uh, after he does the presentation on the glasses. Definitely. Uh, this is Tara. Questions? Yeah, Tara? go ahead, Tara. Um, you mentioned about uh, reading the streets, the street signs, and this was regarding the app, I guess. Um, yeah. How far do you need to be? And would you like um, point it towards the sign if you know where the sign is? Right. If a person with normal vision can read it from the distance that you're at, then the camera will see it and it will read the text. Okay, thank you. All right, Ted. Okay. We'll go to Ted first and then we'll go ahead, Ted. Yes, sir. You mentioned that it would detect a hand dispenser. And I'm in real need of two new hands. I'm wondering where I can find a hand dispenser. Okay. Uh, you said again, I could barely laptop. hear you. Hey, Ted, I think what he was asking is, um, and Bob, I think you said the hand dispenser is pending, right? It's not out yet. The hand Three, gestures. I'm just joking. No, the He's hand. Just well, I didn't say anything about joking. hand gestures yet. Yeah, keep, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Who's next? Mark. Yeah. All right, Mark. Yeah. Uh, is this available for Android? Uh, yes, it is. It's available for all operating systems: Android, obviously iOS, um, Windows, and Pixel. Okay. And uh, next question. We're talking about the barcode uh, identification. Will it be in the future include, let's say, if there's cooking instructions or serving instructions, will that be included in the future? No, because you can use the reading capabilities of instant text or scan text to read the uh, instructions of how to prepare it. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Uh, who's next? Sharon. Mary. Oh, go ahead, Sharon. Um, so I had uh, downloaded the app, you know, when it was subscribed, and I never did anything more. I mean, I literally just downloaded it. So now that it's free, should I, I guess my question is, should I update the app that's on my phone or should I delete it and start over? Update it and it will be free. Okay, just update it. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, this is Marianne. Go, go ahead, Marianne. Um, thank you. Two quick questions. On find object, is door one of them? Find door. Yes, they're going to add that. But doors are tricky because uh, if the door is open all the way, it can't see it. Oh, and also glass doors 
are very, very um, um, difficult to see with the camera. Okay, thanks. Quick question too on curved items like cans of food or when you're walking down a shopping mall, the store signs are at a sharp angle to the way you're walking. I mean, how does it deal with text at an angle or curved? It's an excellent question. Um, instant text does very well on bottles because it's live video stream and you can turn the bottle or the cylinder slowly and it will continue to convert the speech as you turn the cylinder. So it's really amazing how it reads and I recommend the people that have that, people should experiment um, holding uh, in your left hand and then holding the phone in your right hand and, and slowly turning and it will read the curved item. Now, as far as the angled, um, it depends on how much you are. It, um, probably you would have to be within a minimum of 45 degrees to 90 degrees for it to read accurately. Thank you. This right. is Bob. Go ahead, Bob. Yes, um, two quick questions. Can you read a credit card? Can, can you do what? Can it read a credit card? Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Especially instant text. Okay. It really works well. The next question is, where does the app store images that are stored in the library? Is it stored in the phone or on iCloud or on Envision storage uh, media or something? It is stored the, on the phone. This is straight. Um, Bob, I'm going to follow up with that. Now, what happens when you swap phones? I think I've asked you that, that question before. If we go from one phone to the next phone, since the new yes, phone is coming. Yes, you would have to transfer that program over. In other words, uh, when you're at the um, mobile phone store and you transfer, it'll get transferred over in that um, uh, Apple transfer protocol. No, what I'm saying is that where does it, where does the images you store, where does it reside, on the phone or on like iCloud? Or... Yeah, if you erase the app on your phone, you're going to lose your documents. Okay, all right, thank you. That also includes the people that you take a picture of. Okay. So, Bob, does that mean it's stored on a? On locally on the phone, or is it stored yes, locally on your hard drive? Right. It's going to be both, it's... but it's going to be key keyed on the app on your phone. So if you were to okay. delete that app, you will never be able. To, it'll actually warn you that you're going to lose your documents and the, f the pictures of the people. Okay, great, thank you. Follow up question is this Mark again? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I think he was. Uh, uh asking if it can be so, saved to a uh, storage media, like a uh, mini SD card. I'm sorry, I couldn't understand and understand. He was asking if it can be stored externally to a, a um, memory stick or a memory card. Uh, SD no. card. SD no. card. No. You'd right, have to you. share it uh, to another device. Okay, other thanks. Words, you, could ex you could take your whole library and you could, sh you could go through and you'd have to go individually document by doc, document to another device via email or uh, whatever device can handle text. This Marie. Yeah, go ahead, Marie. Just to fine tune that question just a little bit. So if you have a phone and you do a complete backup and then you restore that backup to a new phone, you still cannot retain that information. No, no, that's an iCloud. Are you talking about an iCloud backup? No, no, I'm talking about what's in your, in your life. Well, when you back up the entire phone, it is an iCloud backup, yes. But it should back up anything that's stored within the apps that you have currently on that phone. But, so when you restored your new phone and put the information from that backup on the new phone, does it still lose all the library from Envision? 
No, as long as you go and do the transfer protocol on the iPhone when you switch the phones. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other this questions? Is, yeah, this is Dana with one yeah, go more. Ahead, Dana. Two, two more quest, quest, sure. questions. How does it do reading banknotes? Like uh, do, dollar the bills. Glasses and, will recognize banknotes, not the app. Say that again, please. In other words, when we go to the Envision glasses, we can talk about everything oh, okay. that the okay. um, the extension of the phone apps and the also the additional capabilities that the glasses provide. Okay, and one more um, round, quick one. Um, say I get a, uh, a wrinkled up um, document. Does it do well at reading that? Or does it have to be pretty much smooth? You would need to um, export and share it with another app that's already connected to a Braille uh, device. Oh, no, no, I, I think what he's asking is if he's got a document that's shriveled up and you flatten it back up, how well will it read? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't. Yeah, so basically what he's asking is if he's got a document that he rolled it up into a ball, a piece of paper, and then he flattened that sheet of paper back flat, it's got a lot of wrinkles in it. Yeah. How well oh, would it scan? Okay. okay. Uh, you'd have to try it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Try, try not Thank to. It's too many variables. To be straightforward on that. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right. Who's next? Uh, this is Scott. Reagan. Okay, uh, I'll go with Scott and then. Uh, thank you. Um, regarding the scan uh, feature, how well does it work with say a newspaper where you have columns that would need to be decolonized uh, in order to read them uh, accurately? And I guess the same would be true for something like a large um, uh, book as, as well. Yes, it does have a column by column capability in the device. Now you can go and turn that off under preference, but it already it's there, it is there. Okay. 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 And does is there a size limitation to the page that you can focus upon? Well, under smart guidance. It, um, again, you probably no more than 11 by 17. Okay. All right. Thanks, Scott. Um, Thank you. I, I apologize. Who is the person? Here's Marie. Oh, go ahead, Marie. Yeah, I have one other question. Does the app now, or is there any plans in the future to um, use LIDAR if you have a phone that is LIDAR capable? For finding, you know, objects and so forth. Uh, yeah, they are looking at navigation capabilities, uh, and everything is a uh, possibility. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Um, I, I did want to say about that the quick read stop feature. I did use it when I was in Philadelphia at a museum. And uh, one of the things that I really enjoyed about it is when I was going, walking through these um, pillars and each pillar had a plaque with some description. And I used the other app and, you know, the other one just kind of reads and then it stops. And here, you know, you can go from placard, just have it read if you don't want, if you're not interested, you can stop it and then go to the next plaque, uh, the next placard with the reading. So I thought that was um, a pretty nice feature. So I appreciate you guys doing that stop feature for the quick read. Yeah, and again, it's instant text. And it's really good for why you are in mo motion and putting the phone out. And if you have some kind of uh, um, harness that you can put the phone in, or if you have a, a pocket on your vest, um, you can go ahead and use that instant text with your earbuds and it will read just about everything that's in front of you. Bob, do you know what uh, phones uh, Envision supports now, or will it support, uh, does it still support the older devices? Or is there a device that it doesn't support? 
I had an iPhone 7 and it worked on that. It's more the iOS than anything else. So if you keep your iOS up to date, it'll probably work better. Um, and I, I would have to try it on an old um, device to tell you how backwardly compatible it okay. is. Uh, any other questions? Feel free to ask. This is a good time to ask anything about the app that you might be wondering what it can or cannot do or what you want it to do. Uh, this is Sandia. Yes, Sandia. Okay, so I think you answered this about if you take a photo or take an image and then you said it saves it in the app, can you also have it saved in your camera roll too? Or can you share it? Or like the picture that you're taking is in scan text and that that is kept in the envision app it's processed uh in the cloud and it comes back and it stays resident just in the envision app okay thank you so bob follow up with that so if i'm in a a meeting room and i took a picture of sandia how far will it pick up sandia if she's coming into the conference room or in a meeting room You'd have to try it. Okay. I can't answer that because it all depends on the environmental conditions. If it's bright light, um, if they're coming uh, towards you or away or perpendicular. It's all dependent on whether their face is pointing toward the camera. Okay. Okay. So if they're if they come in and they their back of their head is facing the camera, it's not going to recognize it. Makes sense. Uh, this is this... Sonia. Yeah, go ahead, Sonia. Sorry. I, just following up on that. So if you're in a room and you just kind of pan the room, uh, depend. I know it'll depend on what angle they are, but you could potentially say Shree's in the room, right? Depending on yes. where he is. There's two ways. You could use find people, which is constantly scanning, or you can describe a scene. And, and if the people are in there, it'll tell you who they're in there in addition to the scene description okay thanks okay. Yeah, was it uh, vincent nancy oh hold on one second nancy. was it vincent okay. or did i oh i'm sorry that's okay all right all right go ahead nancy okay now this is a little off topic but is there a way to get an in-person demonstration of this oh yes oh. just need to let uh actually tree should be able to provide my contact information and we can contact a distributor great i'm just down the road from you in austin texas yeah uh, well i'll be in austin in a couple of weeks will you well i'd love to connect with you then if there's a way uh let me ask you what are, are you associated with any organization in austin well i do have an i do have a, a case open with twc okay um, um Basically, right now, uh, Northwest Hills has a device, ATU at Chris Cole has a device, and then Austin Lighthouse will have a device in the next week or so. Perfect. ATU at Chris Cole. That should be able to work. Yep. Okay. This is Nikki. Thank yeah, go ahead, Nikki. I'm very sorry. I, I was in a meeting. I couldn't come in until 2.30, but my question is, um, if you get into an elevator, I might have missed this. If you get into an elevator, will this tell you if there are people in there? Because sometimes in elevators, people will stay in a quarter. They won't say anything. And it makes people very nervous. So will that give you the capability of knowing that someone else is on the elevator with you? The, the, uh, we're, talking about, we're talking about the app now. You right, would have yeah. to have it on find people. And then you would have to make sure the phone is out. Uh, when you're walking into the elevator and then if there's somebody in front of you it'll say there's a person in front of you oh okay thank you very much darren yeah go ahead i this just made me think in an elevator if i had it, the app out would it tell me what the buttons are which way to press it would read all everything from the upper left to the bottom right 
So yes, it would okay. read you the buttons, but it's not going to give you any um, directional advice with the app. Okay, so it would just start reading from the upper what left. It won't like you wouldn't know like the second row, the second button, it's the third floor. You'd have no, to it's figure that start out. if you're in a ten-story building and it's yeah. three rows of buttons. It's going to probably say uh, ten, nine, eight, and then. Um, seven six five all the way to keep on reading that gets to the bottom and will it read things like uh, emergency door open that kind of thing it'll read all that yes it will read um emergency exit signs i've had people actually test that in front of me i mean in, a, in the elevator in the buttons when it's reading the buttons oh the buttons well yeah, yeah. If it's labeled it will read it but it's not going to indicate, it's going to be, um, everybody wants to know specifically what button is what. And there's right now, as far as I know, there's no automated technology to do that for you. Okay, thank you. This is Suva. Yeah, go ahead, Suva. So my question is about the glasses. I was wondering if you could tell a little hey, bit, explain a little hey, bit Suba, more. Hey, Suva, we're going to hold off on the glasses till he's done with the presentation. Oh, we're okay. just going to talk about the app. Um, yeah, any other questions? Bob, do you know if there's anything on the roadmap at Envision where when you're on a text document, if you can kind of like point to it, like it'll kind of start from there, reading? For under what feature, instant text or scan text? Yeah, an instant text. Like, like I was just thinking about that example of the elevator, like if you point to like say number, like you're just pointing it, it says, okay, that's you're somewhere around eight or something. I'm just asking if there's something like that kind of feature coming on the roadmap. Um, right. Uh, so, so let me understand. Are you, are you saying like a bookmark? Uh, kind of like, let's just say if I'm reading it, uh, there's, this, there's a piece, a piece of paper that's a document and I want to start from the middle of it from reading it instead of reading from the top to the end. If I want to say, Hey, read from this particular part of the document. Well, what I would do is, is that you just bring the, the, the cell phone up to the, close to the document and it will end by the fact that you bring it in close, you'll eliminate the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. But but then you would have to move the app down to catch the rest of the document. Right, right. Okay. Right. But yeah, that has been a suggestion. So again, we've got a feedback capability in the app. I recommend people putting in as many suggestions as possible. Because that does go right to the engineers. That's good. To, that's good to know. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Can I just one last question about elevators? So let's say you're in the elevator. Clearly, I have problems in elevators. Um, if you press the button, like let's say you press the button until it lights up, does it? Is there any way for it to tell you, like I don't know, floor three is illuminated? I don't know, or selected? I guess. Uh, no, not yet. Okay. It's Kathy. Jody. All right, go ahead, Kathy, then Jody. Um, I just want to say two things. One is in the elevator, at least it'll tell you whether it's starting from one or whether it's starting from 10, because a lot of times that's a problem. If it's not labeled at all, you're not sure, you know, which direction the numbers are going. But my question is about, um, you, you mentioned that it would read a control panel. I'm picturing like if I wanted to read my oven controls to see what the temperature was on, um, would it read from left to right? And it would just read the whole thing. So when it got to the temperature and said like 425, I would kind of know that that was the temperature. Yes, and if you have any idea where that temperature is located on the panel, if you bring the phone in close, turn instant text on, it will just read what okay. is right in front of the camera. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, Jody? Yes, uh, if you're doing a batch scan and say you have 100 pages and you've only scanned 50 and you stop, do you have to uh, start another scan for 51 to 100 or is it possible to add to the end of that first batch? You would have to add, uh, do a completely new batch. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. 
All right. Any other questions? Otherwise, we can go to the next part. Um, this is Denise with a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, thank you. Uh, if sometimes when I'm watching television, listening to the television, there'll be uh, something in print that shows up on the screen, but it's not spoken by the presenter. Would the phone, would the Envision app pick that up? Absolutely. Instant text, and it will read all text that comes up onto the screen. Now, I have pushed it. And I've gone to Bloomberg. If you've ever gone to Bloomberg, that's constantly moving text, changing, and it can't read it fast enough. Yeah, so but thank you. You'd have to really increase the speech rate, but to keep up, it's the the Bloomberg channel is set up for someone with vision. Okay. Now and the weather I channel. Uh, when are the, it comes up and it's usually like three or four pages and each page comes up for about 30 to 40 seconds, you definitely could use instant text or scan text to reach one of those screens. Thank you. And my second and last question is, um, it, you know, sometimes I take trainings that provide um, slides that need to be reviewed after to, to glean some of the material. Will the Envision app be able to interpret at least the text portion of the slides? Are you talking about slides on like a PowerPoint? Yeah, like a, it'll be like a flip book slides that'll be sent like to a Google Doc. So is this printed or on a video screen? Well, when I would be, uh, yeah, I would be reading it off the computer screen. Okay. Well, the thing about using the dev device you should, if you can make the um, slide full screen and then use the cell phone, yes, it will read it because you don't want to read the ribbon or the status bar or any of the other child uh, windows that are on the screen. So I'm making the, the computer size full screen, screen full screen, is that what you're saying? Yes, if you're using PowerPoint, I believe um, Shift F10 or F11 will do okay. full screen. Okay, thank you. This is Paul. Yeah, go ahead, Paul. Yeah, just a little follow up there for Denise. Uh, that what she was talking about, taking a uh, trying to read something on the TV screen. Uh, that was one of the very first things I tried the other night, and I was flabbergasted how great it worked. That's good to hear. Yeah, in fact, I don't have to ask my wife what the score is of, of the football game. <laughs> uh, any other questions on the app, the Envision app? And as Paul mentioned, this app is free. So if you have not downloaded it, uh, definitely uh, take a look at it. Um, so if, if there's no other questions, I'm gonna go ahead and have Paul talk about the glasses. Uh, so Paul, um, why don't you talk about Envision glasses. Okay, great. Very good. So now I don't know how many people out there are sighted or have low vision, but I'll basically show the glasses to the camera. Okay. Now this is a profile of the glasses. And, and again, since I'm a blind person too, I'll have to find out where the camera is on top of my monitor. So I know exactly where, okay, very good. So this is, these are the glasses, okay? Um, they are basically, the hardware of the glasses are, are basically substitute um, the right temple arm with the hardware of the glasses. So the hardware fits over your right ear, okay? And then you have a um, uh, glasses that uh, you have a temple arm over the left, ear and then you have a two nose pads that sit on the bridge of your nose so that when you put the glasses on it's very comfortable they're very tight and only weighs about three ounces so it's very um, unnoticeable on your head okay uh, now as far as the glasses the hardware there's a, a eight megapixel camera at the front um, there is also a microphone at the front of the glasses. And then you have 
a speaker back behind your ear and then which is next to the battery in the back and that's where the on off switch is in the very back in front of the USB-C charging port and then on the side and again for those people who have vision in front of your right ear to the hinge of the glasses is a touch pad so there aren't any other control buttons um, except for the hinge uh, you use six gestures to control the capabilities of the glasses now the glasses are intended to extend the capabilities of the app into a hands-free device so you would be able to have both hands free yet have all of the features of the app utilized in the glasses okay so uh, basically um, with the glasses you are going to be able to, with the exception of magnification you're going to be able to use all of the reading functions from the glasses you would be able to use the identification and the find feature but also you all have the capabilities of having a video call which people are familiar with facetime call with the glasses and you would make that call to one of two people either friends and family who you've asked to be your ally or starting this week to ira we have collaborated with ira and if anyone has a subscription you'll be able to link the glasses to that subscription so you'll be able to call an ira agent from the glasses and ira is another app if people are not familiar with it um, it allows you to um, get assistance from a sighted person uh, through your phone and now you can have that capabilities with the glasses now i do want to add there is another envision app um, called the ally app and again it's available for iphones androids windows and pixel phones and the ally app allows you another person it's intended for a sighted person to download and they register it with their email and then you can then connect with them and when you make a call from the glasses it basically allows them to see the video stream from your camera and allows them to speak with you and you can hear them as they are assisting you either with um, your uh, PC, your Mac, or with mobility if you're walking down the street or in a shopping center or your house, they're able to see what the camera sees and be able to guide you as far as um, helping you find a pill on the ground, helping you in a restroom find uh, the sink or the other facilities within a restroom, um, or able to help you with an app on your computer. So again, it's FaceTime via the glasses, um, and you can uh, basically ask your sighted friends and family to download that app to their phone so that they can be your video buddy with the glasses, okay? Other functionality, in addition to the capability on the app, is that it will uh, recognize cash. And again, with the 60 languages, you have up to 60 different currencies that it can identify. Um, also, you have the capability of uh, reading QR codes with the glasses. All right. So um, right now you use QR codes to um, link to IRA, but also as far as the, if anyone's heard of Navalens, they're developing the capability to read QR codes with uh, as like with the Navalens uh, for navigation points. Um, also, uh, with the glasses, you do have. Um, the ability to detect light, okay, currency. Um, however, with the glasses, you cannot read barcodes. Okay, that's reserved for the app. 
Now, in order to use the glasses, you do have to have the app because you set up the glasses via the app on your phone. So if you want to read, still read barcodes versus just reading the product packaging, you would use the phone app. Okay. But the glasses will give you the ability to read currency, whereas the phone app does not. Okay. Um, in addition, uh, the big difference uh, is that you can use the glasses to do make a video call with someone and that capability is not on the Envision AI app on the phone. All right. Now, people asked about connectivity. Um, once the glasses have been paired to your app on your phone, you will have the ability to work through Wi-Fi or through the cellular data signal on your phone. Okay. So when you're not near a Wi-Fi signal, you use your phone as a gateway to uh, the internet through your cellular data. If you don't have a cell signal um, and you don't have Wi-Fi, you still have the ability with the glasses to read text with instant text. You'll be able to recognize currency, detect light and detect colors. But you do have to have either a cell signal or Wi-Fi in order to describe a scene uh, and describe people. Now, one other additional capability that um, is extended to the glasses that's not available on the app is Explore. Now what Explore does, it combines finding people and describing a scene together. So under the Explore mode, you'd be walking around and any of the 70 to 100 items that are in Explore, it will tell you that a keyboard is in front of you or that the person that you've already previously added to your find people is in front of you. Or if a table or a uh, chair is in front of you, or if a dog or a cat, it'll say dog or it'll say cat. So explore is, uh, is, is a added capability with the glasses that you don't have with the app. Um, that is kind of like instant text, but it's um, delegated to finding people and objects. And they're constantly adding to that capability. Uh, literally, uh, I just got a new update and there's about um, uh, 80 items that it will tell you that it's in front of you. And it's from uh, sinks and toilets to potted plants and other items. Um, and I can provide that list to Shree and he can send that out to people that are interested in what the items are that can be identified through Explore. Okay. Um, so um, now for people that are using iPhones, um, uh, the um, uh, new iPhones with a hotspot are easier to connect with the glasses than an older iPhone and the older uh, hotspot protocols. However, people with Android phones can seamlessly go from a Wi-Fi network to their hotspot on their Android phone just by walking away from the Wi-Fi network and it'll automatically connect to your phone as long as the hotspot has been turned on. With the iPhone, you, um, uh, when you leave a Wi-Fi environment, um, you do need to manually go through and connect it to the hotspot, okay? Um, so all of the, uh, with the exception of barcodes, um, everything else can be done with the glasses and you have the added capabilities of recognizing cash, detecting light, and also having the ally uh, IRA capability, uh, otherwise known as having the ability to have a uh, vision uh, buddy that you can call on at any time to help you um, um, with orientation, uh, mobility, as well as operating a device or using a computer or finding things. Okay. Um, that's uh, in a nutshell, 
uh, what the glasses can do for you as extending the capabilities uh, from the app. So I guess at this point, I'm ready for uh, questions. Okay, once again, um, if you have a question, just state your name. Um, I'll call upon you and then you can ask the question. Now this time, you know, you can ask the questions as it relates to the glasses or the app since we've covered both. So Sandy, if you can just unmute. Mike over here. All right, Michael, go ahead. Uh, yeah, you mentioned in Android phone from Wi-Fi to hotspot. Uh, does it have to go through the hotspot connection? Because that uh, my uh, most uh, most uh, providers have uh, limited data in hotspots by hot, or by hotspot. So, do you not have access to Wi-Fi? No, I, I, I have access to Wi-Fi, but uh, he said if I walk away from my Wi-Fi connection. I have to have my hotspot on on my Android. Yes. And, uh, and most providers only uh, allow, uh, only provides limited data in hotspot use. So- Yes, uh, in fact, I've, uh, most of that's the limitations come with the high speed 5G. And then when you've reached your um, limit, then it drops to 4G. Yeah, but then uh, some of them, uh, some 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 of the providers even goes goes uh, to three G. Oh, oh, well, they're stopping three G anyway. So yes, it'll be four G. Right. Uh, but you're not using that data unless you're actually using one of the cloud-based features. So that means if you're doing scan text as well as uh, describing a scene, explore, um, and then. Uh, if you're using the video calling feature, yeah, you are using, you sell your data as if you were using FaceTime. So, so I, I'm using cellular data, not my uh, regular uh, phone connection to the network. Well, uh, most people use when they go into their Wi-Fi environment, the phone is set up to remember the Wi-Fi and you're using that Wi-Fi connection. Yes, I understand that's what that. The glasses will do. Yeah, well, uh, what I'm talking about is uh, if I go away from my Wi-Fi, it's good. and it yep. uses cellular Both data, cellular data, cellular data through hotspot or just the regular cellular data. It's the same thing. This is true. I, no, I think what, no, no, not, I think what, no, yeah, no, I think what Bob is saying is if you don't have cell service or if you don't have Wi-Fi to use some of those features. Uh, you need to have data. And what he's saying is if you don't have Wi-Fi and you can use the hotspot to provide the service, it's it's up to you. Oh, okay. So uh, it's if there's no cell date, uh, cell uh, service, and then I can, well, usually if there's no cell service, you there'll have, be no hotspot. No hotspot, that's right. But he's just yeah. saying, if, you're, if you don't want to use the Wi-Fi, you can use your hotspot as your Wi-Fi. And Let's say you're in a hotel you're... and you don't want to use the, oh, okay. the hotspot. You can use I that. see. All right. So you don't want if you don't want to use a public Wi-Fi, then use oh, the hotspot. Glad exactly. you mentioned that. You cannot use a public Wi-Fi for the glasses. Okay. All right. So even though I, I, my uh, my phone has an auto VPN when I connect to a public Wi-Fi, so that won't be possible. Well, you'd either. have to go through your cellular data data to get that, and then you'd have to be driving the glasses through your cellular data connection. Okay. Which would be via the hotspot. Okay. So it's either cell data, Wi-Fi, or hotspot. Well, the cell data is going to be the hotspot. Well, not necessarily, because the uh, hotspot is something you will connect, let's say, a laptop. That's a hotspot. This is Herbie. Oh, hold on one second, Herbie. Let him finish. Go ahead. So, yes, uh, hotspot is like a Wi-Fi from your phone. But it's using your cellular data to get that. So, yeah, okay, yeah, I, I understand that. But 
do I need to go to, uh, to the hotspot in order to connect my uh, the glasses, or I can just use the regular cell data without using the hotspot? No, your cell data without a hotspot is only for your cell phone. It's not for an external device. You have to treat the glasses just like a PC. I see. Okay, now that, that clears everything up. All right, uh, thank you. Okay, if I go to Herbie Hayes, Susan, just want to let you know, we don't use the raise hand feature. So uh, if you have something to say, just uh, state your name and I'll call upon you. So Herbie, did you want to add anything to this? No, actually my point was that he ends up saying it. I just want to collect, yeah, the, a hotspot uses cell data and then that can be a different to cell plan than your actual cell phone. And that's just, it's just a mobile Wi-Fi device, but that's a whole nother, I just wanted to clarify that point. So. All right, thank you. That's all. This is Marianne. Okay, Mary. Now, Susan, did you have a question? I know you're raising your hand. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, sure. My name's Susan, and I'm in Phoenix, and I'm interested in knowing what the price of the glasses is. Good question, Bob. Right now, for individuals, uh, they're twenty four ninety nine. Twenty four dollars and ninety nine cents. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> uh, no, the decimal points after the last nine. Okay. Uh, what what's the normal price, Bob? And how long is the discount being offered till? Twenty four ninety nine is a published price till the end of this month. And then what does it go to? It's normally priced at thirty five hundred. Okay. This is Kathy. Hey, hey Kathy. Oh, I'm sorry, Mar Marion. Sorry. The app is free. Um. Okay. Uh, I was just wondering because you I, about the hotspot. You said if we're on iOS and we're using Wi-Fi, then when we get off Wi-Fi, we have to manually go in and change the setting to hotspot. So if I'm at home and I walk out the door and I want to use my cell data, then each time I'm going to have to go into my phone and manually make a change. It doesn't seamlessly switch to the hotspot. That is, that is an issue with Apple, not with the glasses. So what happens with the Apple hotspot is that if it disconnects from a device, it will then stop transmitting the signal to save on battery. Okay, so mm -hmm. uh, when you before you leave your house, you would need to go in, turn on the hotspot under settings, and then mm -hmm. you, it, depending on which model you have, and in fact. If you don't have a 13 Pro, you will have to disable, allow users to access the hotspot and then re-enable it to start transmitting the signal again from the Apple iPhone. And then you go to the glasses and then you tell it to go to connect to your phone. Okay. And uh, Whereas, last question, the glasses, um, I couldn't see them. So are they, are the lenses open? Or, or Good what, question. You talked about the arms, but not the lenses. Right. There are three glass frames. The ones that come with the glasses are titanium uh, frames with no lenses. You have the temple arm on the left. You have the bridge across your eyebrows. You have the nose pads. Oh. And then the right side of the temple, instead of the temple arm, you have the device itself that sits over your ear. Mm, okay. Thank okay. you. Oh, no, this is, this is, this. There are uh, two other frames. Hey. You have the, in fact, if anybody has um, vision, let's see if I can find it. There it is. These are the Clark Kent fence, Clark Kent <laughs> frames. Okay. Oh. Okay. And then, and again, with people with vision, I'm bringing up the glasses with have the titanium and it's just a wire frame, but the titanium frames can't be broken, but it's very lightweight and very, for people in the Southern climates, you don't sweat at all. Okay. And then we have another frame that just became available, uh, which are uh, smaller than the Clark Kent frames but you can get shaded lane lenses for those other two frames. Go ahead, Kathy. You just, I was gonna ask about the size. You mentioned that the 
the new land, the new frames are smaller than the Clark Kent. Yes. Do you, do you have different sizes for the frames? <coughs> There's clear or shaded, or you can take the glasses to your an optician, and you can have um, prescription lenses put in. You can have bioptics added to them, but, but that would have to be the um, additional frames to do that. But are they one size fits all or are they, can you order different sizes? I mean, if you've got a big head or a small face. Yeah, the titanium frames will fit in just about anybody. Uh, we have, I have an 11 year old um, user here in Houston, um, all the way to um, uh, my, my boss in California has a huge head, <laughs> so. <laughs> and Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hello, this is oh, Terry. Okay, go ahead, Terry. Um, this morning I was going to, I, I've had my uh, glasses for two days. <laughs> um, I was going to try and read the restaurant menu and all it would tell me was that I needed a Wi-Fi connection in order to read them. So I figured I, I wasn't sure if, because it didn't tell me anything about the hot spot, I didn't know with the, whether or not it would read it. So I kind of gave up on it. Um, but it, so it, is it just saying if it needs a Wi Fi connection, you're just considering the um, hot spot as your data Wi Fi connection, if you will? Is there, Who's can I put in the, the glasses? I'm sorry? Where did you get the glasses from? Oh, I got them from uh, the Chicago Lighthouse. And you are in what state? I'm in Illinois. And actually her, her the distributor where she got them from was in, is in Indiana, I think. From Bosnia. Yeah, I don't know but she just mentioned somebody in Indiana who sent them to the Chicago Lighthouse and I purchased them from the Chicago Lighthouse. Okay, if you would email me and we will get you onboarding from our corporate offices because we can give you a virtual um, live onboarding to give you all of the uh, technical instructions of how to set up your Wi-Fi um, and connect to your uh, mobile hotspot. Okay, because I've got my Wi-Fi and my uh, the glasses uh, and my Bluetooth all set up. It's Very just good. that when I was at the restaurant this morning, it, it just said you need wi a Wi-Fi connection in order um, to use this uh, the um, scan text scan text and it didn't tell me anything more about you know and I know how to use my hotspot so that's not a problem but I didn't know realize that I could actually do that now if you don't want if you use their hotspot you can use the instant text to try to read it but you have to remember to keep your head and your hands still because it is live video to text. Right. So if and you then, are moving it around all the time, it's not going to be able to read that text, especially the right. smaller text. And I was using their um, demo glasses a couple of weeks ago with um, the uh, um, the, the, not the scan text, but the, the live video. And it, it read everything beautifully. I've been trying to use my glasses to do that same thing. And it doesn't read things at all. I have to go into scan text in order to read anything. Well, quick I'm not tips. sure why that is. You should set your instant text to offline. Because right now right. it's probably on online. It's offline. Okay. And then it's the environment that you're in. Was it a dark restaurant? 
um, not sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then you should use the detect light feature to see uh, yeah. what it's saying. Um, but again, when you're using uh, AI technology, there is a learning curve when you're out right. and about um, to know what is best feature and capability in the environment that you're in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Please, you need to email me so we can give you some onboarding. I will be glad to do that. Thank you so much. I, I really like them, though. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Terry. Um, who's Hello. next? Yes. Hello. Is this? It's Judith. Uh, go ahead, Judith. I'm just wondering how long the battery lasts when you're using uh, Envision. Like, how Question. often do you have to change the battery? Okay, it's a rechargeable Lion battery. And under average use, it'll go four to five hours between charges. Now, if you put it in standby from 100%, it'll last about 15 hours. If you're using it constantly to say, read a book, you're gonna get about two and a half, three hours on that single battery charge, but you can be charging and using the device at the same time. Okay, it doesn't get hot. Oh. Actually, it does. If you are using like the video um, ally, yes, it does get warm. Okay. It's like a cell phone. Okay, thank you. This is true. Which part of the device does it get warm? Is it obviously if it gets hot by your ear, it's not going to feel so good. Where is it getting warm at? Um, uh, basically, it's up where the processor is up to the front of the camera. Near the front. And this is street. What's the warranty on it? One year. Um, any other questions? Um, this is Denise. Echo okay, Denise. Um, so you spoke about colors when you described the glasses. Is there an intention to add colors to the Envision app? That is in the Envision app. You can. Um, in fact, you have two modes. You have 30 and 256 color modes on the app, but on the glasses, it's it's 30. Okay. And then with um, using the app, is it okay to ask an app question regarding the colors? Sure. It's okay with me as long as it's okay. 53. Um, does, if, uh, can you, does this apply to clothing? And if so, does it indicate that there's more than one color if a clothing item has more than one color? Yeah, in fact, I want people to send uh, feedback under the feedback section under the settings on the app to ask for described clothing. Okay, because right now it's single colors, no checkers, no polka dots, no stripes single colors okay thank you and also i want to let you know the best results come from led lights the white leds this is sandia yes sandia. is there any possibility that they'll bring back the description of the people because i mean sometimes it is helpful if you're looking for somebody maybe you're they're not in your thing but you know they're they have gray hair or somebody said, oh, I have gray hair or blonde hair or whatever. Any thought about that? Um, you can put that in the feedback and okay. ask them to do that. All right. And they always mm -hmm. take 10 years off of my age. So I like it definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe good. Bob, what they should do is just have the feature in a button, have it turn on or off and let the end user determine whether they want to use it or not. True. Am I being heard? Yes, go ahead, Ted. Yes, um, and my apologies for the bad joke earlier. That's all right. Uh, um, I live in a nursing home, and the nursing home provides guest Wi-Fi, but I think you said earlier that unsecured Wi-Fi is not allowed with this service. Also, you had said on the glasses themselves, there is a 
panel that requires six gestures. Now, um, and going back to my bad joke, I don't have fingers because most of my fingers are amputated and many of the iBug group knows this. And so uh, they tease me about how I use my iPhone. And so if I were to ever be able to afford these glasses, though they sound very, very useful, how would I, you, you mentioned that it's hands-free, but you still want to do gestures on a particular part of the glasses. And then if I want to use them around the nursing home, which has uh, unsecured Wi-Fi, it doesn't sound like I'd be able to do that. So could you enlighten me on those uh, topics, please? So are you um, totally digitless on your right hand? I am mostly digitless on both hands. But do you still have any appendages? Not enough to do gestures. In fact, to since you don't know me and you, uh, I live in Houston, you live in Houston, maybe we can uh, do a case study or something uh, eventually. I use my nose, lips, and sometimes my front tooth to operate my phone, which is why... <laughs> Sandia teases me about my last name, Galan knows. And um, I cradle the hand in, uh, I cradle the phone in both hands, rest the uh, charging side of the phone against my chin. And I literally swipe my nose across the glass to operate my phone. I cannot do finger gestures on the green, uh, on the, the uh, glass screen at all. That's correct. Give you an idea of how I function and how I have adapted. Yeah, I would probably stick with the phone and uh, you can use Siri to operate the features on the phone. Okay. So what what phone do you have? I have an iPhone uh, XR right now uh, with the latest iOS. And I just downloaded the Envision app today, but I, I other than listening to your demonstration, I've not done anything with it. But I've been curious for months now about the glasses, but it's way out of my price range at this point, especially living in a nursing home. Yeah, unfortunately, you do need to have a at least a one digit on your hand. Now, uh, you probably could go up and use the side of your hand. So let me try it right now because um, I'm curious. Because I, I do um, deal with a lot of veterans, and if you're a vet, you can get these glasses at no cost. No, sir, I'm, I'm not a vet, but I, I certainly would love to help you beta test anything in the. So future. Let's see here. Oh yeah, I can just use the side of my hand. Hey Bob, can you tell us the six gestures that you can perform on the glasses? Ah uh, yes. Uh, single finger double tap, uh, single finger swipe forward, swipe backward, swipe down. Those are the primary uh, ones. Now you there is the side of your one... hand in doing that. Wait, wait, wait. Ted, let me finish yes. explaining. Okay, I'm sorry. That's right. There is one that is a, uh, uses a two finger, which would limit some of the um, features of the glasses. What does the two-finger gesture do? A two-finger gesture allows you to change settings uh, on the particular feature, as well as exporting a document from the glasses to the phone. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, Ted, what was your question? I'm just going up here and... Goodbye. Okay, let's see. Identify. Identify. Yeah, all I'm doing is tapping um the side of the the my where my um the bone of my lower part of my thumb okay on the side of the glasses now when i say in a situation like you have sir mm -hmm. i would definitely have request a live demonstration to see how it would work and if Sri wants to pass my information on to you at the end of this or vice you speak versa, up then that's perfectly fine Okay. Okay, keep going. All right. Yeah. Uh, who's next? This is Scott. 
Yeah, go ahead, Scott. Just a follow up. Um, I listened to a presentation uh, from representatives from Netherlands earlier this month, and perhaps I'm mistaken, and this could be a roadmap future issue. But as I recall, they mentioned that, that with the glasses, you could now use voice commands. Is that correct. not correct? That's correct. Would the gentleman that uh, has uh, problems with gestures be able to utilize that effectively? Well, with the initial rollout of voice commands, it does require you to touch the device to turn the microphone. Uh, to, tr to turn it on initially? Yes, initially. Um, however, they will be adding a similar feature to Hey Siri. Okay. And my other question goes back to briefly, and I'm sorry to go back to what you were talking about previously on using um, the hotspot and, uh, and your cellular coverage when, you, when uh, Wi-Fi was not available. Can you just go through that workflow again? Because I, my concern is this, my um, current uh, cell phone plan uh, gives me something like three gigs of, of uh, hotspot uh, coverage per month with no additional cost. And I don't know how much hotspot uh, time I would be using. I guess I'd have to experiment with that. But um, is the drain on the hotspot coverage continual uh, as soon as you turn it on? Um, I, I probably would not be using some of those features that require um, an internet connection all of the time. But I'd, I guess I would like to be able to use it seamlessly once I'm out and about and not have to stop and, uh, you know, then initiate the, um, the hotspot coverage. Am I being clear? Yes. Okay. Thanks. The only time you use any cellular data is when you activate a feature. So when you want to do scan text, that's when you when you initiate and takes the picture and you get the result back. That's the only time that you're using cellular data. Okay, and that's either. Uh, um, so when you go to describe a scene, or, you take a picture of the scene, it will go ahead and uh, analyze that. And then when it gives you the answer, then it stops using the cellular data. Hey, hey Scott, why don't you ask that question again? I think he may have not heard what All you right. said. The, uh, the other thing I'm, I would like clarification, when you say cell data in that example, are you talking about my, my basic phone cellular data, which is unlimited? Or would this be drawing on, on the 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 uh, the hotspot data, which is limited? Hotspot data with the glasses. Okay, so anytime that I the the, the glasses would be away from Wi-Fi, a Wi-Fi connection, uh, you would be using uh, hotspot data. Then it, is that to operate the features, but it doesn't continuously right. use a stream of data. I, I understand. I yeah. understand. Okay. All right. Uh, do you know how heavy of a drain? Uh, do you have any any rule of thumb in terms well, of right now? You can go. Do you have an iPhone or an Android? I have an iPhone uh, 11. You can go into settings under your account, and there's a section that tells you how much data is being used. Yes. But you yes. and that's where it would show up. Okay, and that's how I can tell how much the classes yep. really were, 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 were utilizing. Okay, data. Exactly. Okay. All right, thank you. You're thank welcome, you, Scott. This is Terry. Yeah, go ahead, Terry. Um, it was interesting the other day when talking about the colors, it said um, you, your options with the glasses were uh, 30 or... 900 and something, it, which is a lot more than 256. So now I'm kind of confused. So where did you hear where and what with the 900 shades of colors? 
uh, when I was in the color um, mode, you know, when I was going to try and, and determine what color something was, and there were two options, the 30 color option and the 900 and some color option. I believe it's 256. Yeah. So why is it telling me 900 and something? That's probably something I need to do a feedback on that I'm guessing. Yeah. If you, you're talking about the app. Right I'm now, talking about uh, the glasses. Um, I don't. I've never had the glasses tell me 900 unless it's reading text of something in there and it says 900 on the fabric. No. Uh, maybe this is something uh, we may have to figure out, test it and figure it out. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm not, a, it's, no, it's not making connection with me and my familiarity with the glasses. Okay, I'll, I'll send that feedback and see what, because this is, I was just in a room and I want, you know, wanted to know the color of, I don't know, I don't even remember what I was looking at the color of a chair or something or, uh, you know, but it wasn't clothing or anything like that. And it just went to that, it, you, you could go either from 30 to 900 and some different colors. <laughs> so I'll send that in as a, as a comment that they might need to look at. That was good. Thank you, Terry. Uh, any other questions? Sharon? Yeah, go ahead, Sharon. Um, so I just want to make sure I heard this right. These glasses are, are pretty lightweight. Is that what you're saying? Could you repeat that? Because it glitched. She asked if the glasses are lightweight. Do you have the yes. weight of those different glasses? Three, well, the device itself is about three ounces. And that sits on your right temple arm. Okay, but the actual weight of the other frames, I don't have that information. Okay, but basically, it's Sharon again, sorry, it's not that heavy, because mm -hmm. I had um, been at the lighthouse in New York, and I was just trying on some other sort of, I guess, maybe vaguely similar glasses, and they were all tremendously heavy. This sounds like it's, it's, it's you know definitely usable. It's not so heavy. More than when did like you visit the uh, uh, New York Guild Lighthouse? When? Yes. Oh, like last week. <laughs> I when? didn't. Visit, I, it was. It's a, It's a different kind of study thing. I. They didn't show those to me. I bet they will, but I didn't. I didn't specifically. I'm hoping they will show them to me. They have them in New York, correct? Oh, Brian Lewinsky has a pair. Okay. I will go find Brian and get him. Yeah. Try him out. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Uh, Bob, is there anything on the roadmap for these glasses to have LIDAR? Uh, that was a question earlier. I Everything is an, uh, an open possibility because the uh, app and the glasses are a, a system and there, it's intended to extend the lifespan of the hardware. So they're not intended to be um, a, a planned obsolescence device. Now, uh, it would probably have to use a LIDAR, LIDAR on, the, on the phones at this time. Uh, so is there anything on the Envision side right now that can give us like distance by measurement, like it's it's three feet away or six feet away when you get an object? No. Hmm. Okay, thank you. This is Jody. You have two cameras for that. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Jody. Yeah, is there is there any future plans to use Bluetooth to connect the glasses to the phone rather than using uh, Wi-Fi and, and cellular? Actually, you are using Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and the hotspot, all three. Oh, uh, OK. This is Greg. Yeah, go ahead, Greg. 
Yeah, I had two questions. One is, as I understand it, the glass, the base price on the glasses, the glasses come without any lenses. And if that's the case, what's the add on? And then my second question is in terms of tech support, uh, what type of tech support is it? Do you just call in a number or how do you, how do you get tech support on the glasses? You actually use the app on the phone and you provide feedback and you say, I want to schedule um, tech support and you'll get a immediate reply and it may even be, provide you a time that they're going to call you. Does that answer your question, Greg? We, yes, thank you. And, and on the lenses, uh, was my understanding correct that the base price glasses come without lenses and then lenses are an add-on? Yes, yeah, so are you wanting for safety or for light uh, sensitivity? Uh, either. And, and what, what approximately is the, the additional cost for either of those? All right, well, there's the two other frames and one frame, which is a Smith Optics, uh, they're right now at, a, I believe, $300 for the frames. And the new Flex frames are going to be about $100. And they'll both have either have options for clear lenses or shaded. And that will be an additional cost for the shaded. Any other questions? This is Terry. Yeah, go ahead, Terry. I, I just wanted to, to verify or corroborate what uh, uh, Bob is saying about how light the glasses are. Sharon was concerned about that. They are very light and very comfortable. Uh, and so I, as a user, I just want you to understand that he's, he's not kidding, even with I'm using right now just the uh, frames that come with the glasses with no lenses, but they are very light and very comfortable. And I think for most people, that, that would not be a problem. And Terry, let me ask you about the heat. Have you sat down and really used them to read or use the Ally feature for a long yes. period of time? How hot does it get to you? I would say it gets warm. I would not uh, at all say that it gets hot. I would say that it is the equivalent of your iPhone when you're using um, uh, video um, or even right now my, my iPhone, I'm, I'm using the Zoom feature just with audio and it's still warm but it's not uncomfortably hot. And I would say that that's how the glasses are as well. Okay. All right. well, thank you for sharing that, Terry. It's good information for people to know, especially from a user perspective. Right. Uh, any other questions? We're kind of wrapping up. So these are all Marianne? good questions. Go ahead. Well, this is a, a wrap up question. Um, if I'm interested, especially this month with the current price in getting more information, um, uh, how do I find a salesperson to talk to? Great question. Once you send me your information and then I will find the distributor in your area that can help you. And Bob, What's is there a- information? I'm sorry, Bob, is there a, um, is there a website that people can go to if they're yes. trying to figure out? Let's envision.com. And that's L E T S. Is it an apostrophe? No, it's, I'll spell it out. It's L E T S E N V I S I O N.com. Yes. Thank you. And, and there will uh, be a list of uh, distributors in the U.S. that you can go down to. Uh, and I, I actually have never used it, but I believe that it'll ask you um, for your location and it will give you the closest distributor to your area. Thank you. You're welcome. This is Terry, one more time. Sure, Terry. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, on the uh, 
I received an email last week that said that um, there is going to be an, another Zoom call with the folks from en Envision in, I want to forget, the, right on the 25th, I was thinking of, is it Denmark or the Netherlands or somewhere, wherever they are, but, um, and you have to register for that Zoom call. And it also said, and I've gotten a couple of reminders, which makes me, make me chuckle. We have a big announcement coming up too. And so, you know, but I just want people to know that uh, on the 25th, there is going to be another Zoom call from, uh, from the people that, that uh, develop the glasses. I think that's who they are. Yes. Um, and so if you, uh, you can probably get the information when you, yes, when you go to the, um, uh, when you download the app to your phone, it will tell you uh, that, that there's this, uh, ne the next uh, webinar is coming up and please uh, uh, register for it. And then there's an okay button. So you don't register when you download the app or when you go into the app, but it's just a reminder that you can do that. And it tells you where, how to register for this Zoom call. All right, thank you. Jerry, I do have a question for you. Yes. Do you have, have any site at all? I do not. Okay. Never do have you... had any site either for that matter. So I don't have visual memory either. Okay. Do you have any family members that would be your ally? Uh, yes, I have a niece who I asked yesterday to be my ally, and she, we tested them out yesterday. And the, and the camera is a wider angle camera, so it really does a good job of seeing a, a quite a wide field. Very of, wide field. Yes. It's actually, it's 80 degree lens and it's wider field than a normal eye. Exactly. So the reason why I asked is that they can be extremely helpful when all the technology you may have or may utilize doesn't work. You can go and use the ally feature and have someone be there virtually for you when they could be thousands of miles away. Yep. She's in Nevada and I'm in Illinois, and that, that's exactly the case. Excellent. And I, I do know that. And, and I have a couple of other allies that I've invited from whom I haven't heard yet, but I have two registered right now, one in Florida and one my niece in Nevada. So Fantastic. I definitely am aware of that. Very good. Uh, and you, there Terry. is one other alternate and that's what they want to announce on the Zoom webinar is the collaboration with Ira. Mm -hmm. uh, well, so another Bob, incentive, if uh, you become an Ira customer with the glasses, I believe they're going to offer some free minutes with the initial subscription. Yes, I did see that as well, because I am an Ira customer, but I'm using it for free right now. I'm not paying for the sub, so you only get like five minutes. And I don't know if that applies here with the Envision glasses or not, but I'll check that out too. It does. And there are a lot of free places that you can use IRA, such as Walgreens, almost all the cell phone stores, airports, and many other locations. Yep. I understand that Wal Walgreens is no longer uh, free. Well, I did not know that several months ago. All right, well, we kind of came but to the end. Bob, I just want to say thank you very much uh, for spending the Sunday evening letting us know about the app as well as the glasses. I also want to thank everybody that participated and asked questions. Sandy, do you have any final thoughts? 
Yeah, I'm just so excited. Thank you for sharing your uh, time with us, Bob. And thanks, Shree, for putting everything together. And everybody, y'all have a great week. We have a busy week, like I told y'all. So we hope that you will just visit our website and find out what the current events are. Monday, Tuesday, Monday's Buzz, Tuesday's Mac Buzz, th Wednesday's Android yeah. Insight, Saturday, <laughs> Thursday is Trekkie Talk, Friday's iBug Virtual Movies, and Friday, uh, Saturday's the Apple Workshop. So those are what's coming up. The easiest way is to visit our website, iBugToday.org. Org, and thank you for coming and happy Sunday. Thank happy you Sunday. very much, so, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank Be you. safe and stay well. All right, thanks, Bye. Bob. How Appreciate do we it. Find out, Bob, how do we find out your email address? <laughs>